Hey everybody, Richard Pie Guy here. Today I'm going to show you how to map a gamepad controller that's trigger buttons are not mapping properly on RetroPie. So I just had a customer reach out to me. He actually sent me his 8-bit Do SN30 um, gamepad controller. This is a wired gamepad controller. This is it right here. Um, I'm not super familiar with these. I have almost exactly the same one, but the Bluetooth version. Um, I believe it's a, it's this guy right here. Um, this is the SF30 Pro, so they're pretty much the same deal. You know, they look a little bit different, but obviously have the same functions, um, trigger and shoulder buttons, everything is exactly the same. But for some reason, when you put this on RetroPie and you make your first connection, you go through the initial mapping process, the trigger buttons just don't register. If you, you can hit them all day long, they just don't populate into the system. So. Um, it's definitely a frustrating thing. I went to a couple forums. The uh, customer actually provided me with a couple links and I tried a bunch of the different things that people were saying on there. Um, they were all kind of vague and none of them worked, which was unfortunate. So um, I did find a workaround and it's simply going through RetroArch in order to do this. Um, you just bypass those two options on the initial mapping when you go through your configure input settings on RetroPie. So Super easy process. It's a pretty straightforward workaround. So let's get started. I'll show you exactly how to do this. All right, so the first thing we need to do is plug in our 8 controller into the USB port on a Raspberry Pi. And whether you're doing input from a fresh startup like I am in this video here, where obviously I'm on the welcome screen, or you're going in through your main menu and just dropping down to configure input, you're going to advance to the same page, the mapping page from here. So I'm just going to, I've plugged this into my USB port. I'm just gonna hold down the A button here. You'll see that the name populates in the bottom. This one does register as Microsoft Xbox 360 for some reason. Um, so we're just going to go through the configuring process here and we'll see what we're talking about with the issue with the triggers in a moment. So just to get started, we'll do the D-pad. So D-pad up, we'll hit D-pad up, D-pad down, D-pad down, D-pad left, and then D-pad right. We're going to hit the start for start, select for select, and then the mapping for these buttons is A, B, X, Y. So we're going to do A for A, B for B, X for X, and Y for Y. Left shoulder, right shoulder. So here's where we run into the issue with the left and right triggers not registering for this particular 8-bit DOE controller. You can see here um, for left trigger, I'm hitting the L2 button. Nothing's happening here. Um, same for right trigger, R2 button. Nothing's happening at all. So we're just going to skip these in this um, configuring page here. So we can do that by hitting any of the buttons we've already mapped. I'm just going to hold down A for each of these. And it's just going to bypass to the next one. Same thing for right trigger. And now we'll be able to continue on. So for left thumb, we can hit the left thumb, right thumb, right thumb, left analog up, left analog down, left analog left, left analog right. Same thing on the right analog side, up, down, left, right. And then for the hotkey, you can go ahead and assign your hotkey. Either hit select or on 8-bit though controllers, you do have these extra buttons here. So I'm just going to utilize this one under the B. That's always my go-to for hotkeys. And then just to confirm all these, we're going to hit the A button here. So now we can see that we're able to navigate this with our D-pad. So I'm going to show you exactly how this is working without mapping those um, trigger buttons. So let's jump into a PlayStation game. Uh, let's do Medal of Honor. This is just one game that I'm really familiar with, with the trigger function. So in this game, the trigger function for um, R2 is going to be to aim your rifle or any gun that you're using in this game. So I just want to jump into the gameplay and show you exactly what's going on. All right, so I'm going to just hold the R2 right trigger button here. You can see that obviously we didn't map anything, so nothing happens. What should be happening if this was mapped is you'd get your crosshairs up here and you'd be able to aim your rifle. So as of right now, I'm not able to do any of that. You can see on here, nothing works. And um, also another function I want to be able to utilize is my analog sticks on here, which in this particular game is empowering this. That's not the point of this video, but I'm going to actually show you how to go ahead and make that work as well on here. So let's exit this game. And I'm going to show you exactly how we fix this trigger issue. 
So we need to go into our configuration options settings. Depending on your build, um, it's usually going to be the one that has either a RetroPi or a Raspberry Pi logo on it. So in this case, for this 256 gigabyte card from RetroPi Guy, it's going to be this menu here. And then we're going to drop into RetroArch here. Let this load for a couple seconds. And basically, this is going to give us um, just a more involved version of our mapping. So you'll see that in the bottom left corner, it just flashed the confirmation of which controller we're currently using. So it's going to bring us into our menu here. We're going to drop down to settings and then drop down to the fourth option down, which is input. And now we're going to drop down to port one binds. So now for the analog on here, um, that's actually, again, not the point of the video, but since we're in here, I'm going to show you this. Um, that is the second option here. See how it's set to none. We're just going to go to the right here and bring up left analog. So that means that in those PlayStation games, we're able to control our direction now with this left analog rather than having to use the D-pad, which you know I don't think is ideal for PlayStation. All right, so now going down, these are all of our functions. You can see here we have the B button, X button. We have all of our different options here, D-pad, all of that. So if we go into L2, and R2 here, the two trigger functions, you can see them right there. You'll see that they say key E and key R. So we need to go in and map them here. Obviously it wasn't working in the regular mapping for RetroPie, so we're gonna do it in RetroArch. So for L2, we're going to select it with the A button, and we're going to hit that L2 once we bring it up. So select it with A, hit L2. You see that now we've changed that to, it still says key E, but it says plus two in there. Uh, with NA in parentheses. So now we go down and do the same thing with R2. Select it with the A button, hit R2, and you'll see that that now says plus five, um, NA in parentheses, comma, key R. So that's all we need to do here. We're going to scroll all the way down. It's gonna just loop us back to the top. And this is a super important part of this. You need to hit save auto config. You'll get a little confirmation that says it was saved successfully in the bottom left corner. If you don't save this auto config, it's not gonna save any of what you just did. So it's going to be, um, you know, just remain in the default settings. So you definitely need to hit save auto config in order to make these changes. So now we can hit B and just back back out of these different um, pages and we'll go down to quit RetroArch. All right, so now we're back to normal here. Um, I, it's not a bad idea, just get in the habit of rebooting your system. Every time you make changes like this, it's just a good way to make sure that everything sets and confirms correctly. So I'm going to do that, jump into main menu, drop down to quit, and just hit restart system here. All right, so we just rebooted our system, so we're just gonna navigate over to the PlayStation collection, and we're gonna jump right back into the same game. We'll jump into Medal of Honor, and just test this out, and make sure that everything saved correctly. All right, so here we are back in Medal of Honor. We're going to just hit that R2 right trigger button, and there we go, we have our crosshairs. We're able to aim our rifle as needed. So if we go through this game and just test that function out, see we're able to now do that. Whereas before the right trigger was not working at all. We weren't able to map it. All right, so that's gonna do it for today. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button on this video. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do a whole bunch of different tutorials, gameplay demos, product reviews, just a lot of great stuff based around retro gaming. And of course, check us out online on our website, www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching.